Um, this is going to be a little presentation that I would like you to watch before you go ahead and do your case studies. So this is a um, summary. You have to refer to the lecture notes and to the lecture itself to actually have a, a better comprehension of the topic. Again, this is just a quick summary before you do your case studies. So a quick anatomy review. Remember that we divide the respiratory tract into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract and the components of the lung um, include bronchioles and alveoli which are microscopic therefore they are not showing in this image here just a reminder that you have your alveoli and then you have the capillaries um, running next to the alveoli and that actually allows this proximity between the alveoli and the blood allows for gas exchange to occur. And why why do we need <coughs> gas exchange? Well, this is actually part of respiratory system physiology because we need oxygen to produce energy. And as a result of energy production, the cells produce a waste that is carbon dioxide which needs to be eliminated. So that's gas exchange and that's occurring what we call the respiratory membrane. That's the interface between the alveoli and <coughs> alveoli and the bloodstream. And you have the passage of carbon dioxide from the bloodstream to the alveoli and oxygen from the alveoli back to the bloodstream. So what determines pathology? So I want you to think about two situations. Um, one is that I have my airways and they terminate in my alveoli and all of a sudden, let's say that I have a cold and I have a, a an irritation and inflammation of the mucosa and I'm producing mucus. You can actually see from the sound of my voice that I do have a little bit of a cold. So this um, excessive mucus that's being produced is actually narrowing my airways. Now I don't have enough room or not as much room for oxygen to reach my alveoli. This is what we categorize or classify as an obstructive disorder. The alveolus is alright or can be alright or can be um, accumulating mucus as well but the fact that there's a reduction in the airway and the passage of, of air uh, categorizes an obstructive disorder. And what about lung compliance or loss of elasticity? So we do have the alveoli but we do have matrix around the alveoli, other types of tissue that fill in the gaps between the alveoli and the um, vessels of our lungs. This is called the parenchyma, the lung parenchyma, and this has to be very elastic because the alveoli, they have to move in and out, inflate and deflate with the movement of the lung. If all of a sudden there is a problem that changes the composition of the lung parenchyma, making it less elastic, then the alveoli will be restricted and they'll have less room to expand and that characterizes a restrictive disorder. So if we think about <coughs> things like asthma, it's an obstructive disorder, but something like a tumor or a mass that is a restrictive condition. We'll see some other examples as well. <coughs> so if I just explain this with the real thing, these are real histology slides of, of this is um, normal lung here and you can see that you have a nice opened bronchial, a lot of space in here for air to come in and out and reach the alveoli which are these little little pieces here. You can see that the membrane around the alveoli is really thin and there's a lot of empty space and this empty space actually means that air 
can occupy the space in the alveoli and be available for gas exchange. So that's good. That's what we want. So let's think for a moment <coughs> that something has irritated the mucosa of my bronchioles. Can be a virus, can be bacteria, can be an allergen such as an asthma, something that triggers an inflammatory cascade. And with an inflammatory cascade, you guys probably remember that you have um, histamine as one of the chemical mediators being released. And histamine causes, amongst other things, um, swelling and edema and increased vascular permeability. So all of this results in swelling of the mucosa, of the bronchi, bronchioles, and sometimes even the alveoli. With the irritation caused by the chemical mediators, the, the mucous glands that normally produce a little bit of mucus and a little bit of coating in the respiratory airways, they get irritated and they now produce a lot of mucus. So producing a lot of mucus, you see that we are reducing even further the lumen or the diameter available in here for gas to come in and out of the lungs. So you have inflammation and you have mucus production and all of this is reducing the passage of air. And on top of that, when you have irritation and inflammation, you have an activation of the smooth muscle of the bronchioles, and they actually uh, they actually bronchoconstrict. So that will reduce the lumen even further. So now what happens is that you don't have a normal airway anymore. You have just a little bit of room now for air to reach the alveoli. Therefore, you will have <coughs> impaired gas exchange because of the inability of air to actually reach the, the, the alveoli and reach the respiratory membrane. So in this image here, you see a bronchial that's been bronchoconstricted. This is all there is in terms of lumen here for air to come in and out. So this image is the real demonstration of what I just scribbled here on the right hand side of the slide. So this is the representation of a, an obstructive condition because you have reduction of passage of air. What happens if we have a restrictive condition? With a restrictive condition, you will have damage to the parenchyma of the lung. So now what happens is that you will have less less areas where gas exchange can occur. So gas exchange is impaired from a different perspective, is impaired because the respiratory membrane is affected and also because if you have fibrosis and you have a change in the composition of the parenchyma, this becomes less elastic. Therefore, the alveoli that are sitting here next to the area affected, these guys are normal, but they don't have enough room to expand anymore because now you have this fibrosis over here. So the fibrosis is actually restricting the, um, <coughs> restricting the ability of the normal alveoli that are still left to expand. So this is a restrictive restrictive condition. So those are the main differences between <coughs> obstructive and restrictive conditions. And in terms of specific pathologies, what happens? You see that most of the respiratory um, conditions that we're going to be talking about, they will have a component of inflammation. But they might have other causes or etiologies. They might result from trauma, from infection, or from the presence of a mass, but what happens is that you do have tissue injury. And we do have tissue injury, you usually trigger the inflammatory cascade. And the results of the inflammatory cascade are irritation of the tissue, swelling of the mucosa, and this irritation results in an increased mucus secretion 
and also in bronchoconstriction because of contraction of smooth muscle. So what do you think is the result of irritation, swelling, secretion and bronchoconstriction? All of these things will actually reduce airflow. If you have a reduction in the amount of air available to reach the respiratory membrane, you have impaired air delivery. Impaired air delivery in turn will result in impaired gas exchange. You have less gas available for the exchange. And there's another thing. Remember that I said that the respiratory membrane to be functional, it has to be very thin for gas exchange, diffusion of the gases to occur. If all of a sudden, because of inflammation, my respiratory membrane is thickened and swollen, then gas exchange will be harder to occur. So the inflammation itself also contributes to impaired gas exchange here. If this if 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 these events here continue in a vicious cycle, you end up with the destruction of the lung parenchyma and fibrosis. So when you get to this stage, you actually have permanent damage to the structures of the lung.